Hi everybody, my name is Tom Jouse and welcome to another episode of Learn That Film, a show in which we take a look at using the free, open source software Blender as a tool for visual effects and filmmaking. Now in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at some of the work that went into a recent video I made for a local amateur dramatic society. Everybody ready? Yeah. 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 And go! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm part of a local amateur dramatics group based in the village of Willersby where I grew up and is a amateur dramatics group which uh, thrives on the amateur side of things. It uh, um, lives by the cock-ups, the ad-libbing of the cast and sometimes the falling apart on stage and really no not knowing what's going on. Black chocolate! <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> So our last show was a movie theme show and a long time into the pre-production of this my father came to me with the idea of recreating some famous movie scenes in the village that we could show on the show nights during the performance. Initially it was just going to be a few scenes shown one after the other but as it progressed I decided it was probably going to be best if it could be something a little more so it ended up being that we decided to make a movie trailer for a fake movie and that trailer can be seen via the link in the description below. Obviously all the effects were done in Blender, but also, as with this show, I used Blender's video sequence editor to do edit the entire trailer as well. So the first shot was the shark shot, and for this I modelled out a very simple shark shape, and then animated it along a curve using a bend modifier to simulate the movement. I used dynamic paint to simulate the fin passing through the water, which I then projected the original video back onto it as a texture, but the effect was hardly noticeable in the final video. Next up was the witch explosion. And this was a great shot to work on, not least because I completely screwed up on the day of filming and it forced me to push my skills in post-production. It was a busy day and I didn't want to keep people hanging around too much, so in a rush I shot it handheld and forgot to get a clean plate, only realising my mistake about five minutes after the girls had changed costume for another shot. Luckily, during the best take of the shot, the girls separated momentarily and I was able to get a partial clean plate. Then I managed to get another partial clean plate from earlier in the shot, I comped the two images together and I had a full clean plate, albeit a still one, because if you notice in the background it was a windy day and the trees were moving all over the place. Luckily there would be a lot of effects going on in the foreground to hide it and the shot was quick enough that hopefully nobody would notice. I did a simple 2D track for the footage and then parented the clean plate to one of the empties. Once I had done this I set about doing a lot of rotoscoping to allow me to separate the girls from the background and to make the witch violently fly out of shot. I then threw in a load of effects from the F12 action cache that I colour corrected to look like witch splatter. Finally, I decided to go through the painstaking job of rotoscoping the witch to make her look greener, because the makeup that we used on the day didn't look as good on camera as it did actually in real life. Then we have the alien shot. I trapped the sight of the gun and created an Iron Man style HUD from some circles that I animated using a noise modifier on the rotation keyframe. I trapped the tip of the gun and added a simple smoke simulation to that. Then I threw in some cheesy images of some lens flares, just screened those over the top of it using the node editor. Next up was Harry Potter. This was simple enough, I stabilised the camera move a bit and then tracked the ends of the wands, mostly by hand as the footage was so blurry. I really must learn to shoot at a higher shutter speed when I'm doing effect shots in future. Then I added a couple of particle systems to the tracked wands. There's a really dodgy shift in the middle of the shot as I only did a two simple 2D track instead of doing a full 3D track but I was running out of time and to be honest it's not that noticeable. E.T. aka the worst shot in the piece. This was again due to time constraints. We ended up having to shoot this after people had gone home. I was going to cut it together with Clark Kent pushing him off the bike but it looked terrible as we shot in a completely different location. In the end I threw up my green screen on some low guttering at the village hall and filmed my mother acting out the cycling. Then I rigged up my camera in the back of my car and I drove up the street filming the background plate. I tracked in an image of E.T. and then I masked around a blanket to hide the edges. The Superman shot was me being ambitious. We shot this early on in the month so I had a lot of time to work on it. I tried to use a trick of moving the camera from mark to mark, planting the camera on its tripod and this allowed me to change over the cut in the middle. Then I added some extra camera shake in post-production to help it seem like it was one continuous handheld shot, although there were some glaringly obvious shunts when the tripod hits the ground. Takeoff was a simple case of shooting a clean plate 
and then masking out the actor from the jumping shot. A second lot of masking allowed me to keep the shadow. At the peak of the jump, I used the transform and blur nodes to fire him into the sky at supersonic speed. I masked around the ground and animated that to reveal a cracked dirt texture on the floor. Then I added a simple smoke simulation and a dirt charge from the F12 action cache, both of which I had pre-rendered. Finally we do a whip pan to the sky for the same smoke simulation as a texture and then also a little superman as a texture as well. Finally my favourite shot in the trailer, the gone with the wind shot. Wait a second, there was no effect in that shot. Yes there was. See in this shot we had Jane centre stage in a very wide shot and we couldn't get a microphone close enough to her without actually having somebody standing in the shot. So we just did that. We had Nicola standing shot holding the boom pole in position. Then we got a clean plate, did a little bit of masking and voila, the simplest of effects, but the best. So that's it for today. I really hope you've enjoyed having a look at this behind the scenes, some of the work that went into this, albeit a very amateur production. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the section below and I will do my best to answer them all. Other than that, until next time, thanks very much for watching. And go. Get away from her, you witch. Right, great. <laughs> Good enough take? I think so, yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. Nailed. That's cool. <laughs> 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 Nailed him too. <laughs> <laughs>